Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to learn about super mesh analysis. This uh, technique can be considered as a better technique uh, compared to mesh analysis. So for some cases uh, we can't apply mesh analysis to solve the problem. So at uh, such conditions we can apply super mesh analysis so that we can find the solution. Okay, so uh, let us see how the super mesh analysis can be done and uh, at what conditions the mesh analysis is going to be failed so uh, the all, all the details will be uh, discussed in this video with some uh, one or two examples okay so here i am considering uh, a simple network okay so here is uh, some voltage v so couple of resistors so here let us assume this as resistance r1 one more resistance r2 okay and uh, here we are having a current source right let us assume this current as i okay and uh, let's have one more loop okay so assume this resistance as r3 next uh, let's have one more resistor r4 okay so this is a simple network firstly whatever the procedure that we have followed for mesh analysis the same procedure can be applied here first we need to check whether the given network is planar or non-planar so since this network is not having any kind of crossovers then it can be treated as a planar network the second step is to identify the number of meshes. So here we are identifying three meshes. I'm counting them as one, two, three with uh, circled numbers. Okay. Now, and uh, this problem is not given with the loop currents. So that's why I'm assuming the loop currents also. Okay. So let us assume the loop current of first mesh or first loop as i1 and let us assume the second loop current as i2 and similarly the third loop current as i3 okay so this is how we need to follow the process okay now after uh, assuming the current directions uh, we have to apply kvl for each and every mesh so let us go with mesh one so before applying uh, this KVL, let us observe the first mesh. So in this first mesh, you are having R1, R2, a current source and a voltage source. So KVL means you are going to find voltage across each and every element and you have to sum up all the voltages in a closed loop and it should be equal to zero. So here we can able to calculate voltage across R1, voltage across R2 and directly voltage source V was given to you. So there won't be any difficult. Now, coming to this current source, we can't able to uh, find the voltage drop across this current source uh, in an easy way. Okay, so it will be a bit difficult. So at this particular point, so we need to apply super mesh analysis. So since this current I is common for mesh 1 and mesh 2, we are going to write a single equation for mesh 1 and mesh 2. I think I was clear with this mesh 1, mesh 2 uh, combination. Okay, so now, and what direction of current that we need to follow now? So what you need to do, you have to take a common current direction for the two meshes. Okay, so here I am following this particular direction. This is my common current direction. So fortunately, my I1 is also in the same way and I2 is also in the same way. Okay, so let us start with uh, resistance R1. So now voltage across R1 plus go with the flow with the yellow line. So next th there is no element in the second loop. Next it will be followed by R3. So voltage across R3. Uh, next immediately it will follow the path. Okay, so just follow the yellow line. So immediately you are getting a voltage source. First polarity you are getting it as minus. Okay. So plus of minus V. 
equal to 0. Okay, so if you solve this one, you will be getting one equation. So what is Vr1? Is the voltage drop across R1? Since the current flowing through R1 is I1, then voltage drop according to Ohm's law, V equal to IR is the formula. Okay, so now it will be R1 into I1. I'm keeping R1 in the front. That's it. Okay, so plus first write R3 because see here, R3 is common for second mesh as well as third mesh. And we are writing for mesh 1 and 2. So 2 is my preference. So I2 can't be negative. So keep I2. How this I3 is acting? So see, so from bottom to top, it is flowing. So how I2 is flowing? That is top to bottom. So that's why you have to take minus I3. Since the current I3 is in opposite direction with the I2. You have to take minus. So keep this V to other side. You will be getting equation 1 if we can solve. Okay. So I will simplify this one. This is R1 I1 plus R3 I2 minus R3 I3 equal to V. So this is our first equation. Now coming to the second. Uh, we have already completed the second loop. No. Now what is the leftover? So mesh 3. Okay. So, now we are going to write mesh 3 equation. Okay. Now, mesh 3. So, this will be a normal mesh analysis because you won't find any common current source. So, simply apply KVL. Okay. Right. Now, if we apply, follow the I3 direction. First element that you are getting is R4. That is voltage across R4 plus voltage across R3 must be equal to 0 according to KVL. Since the current flowing through R4 is I3, so this is R4 into I3 and R3, you are following I3 direction. So, I3 is your reference current. So, it can't be negative. So, I3. So, how I2 is acting? It is acting opposite to I3. Oh, sorry, I2 is acting opposite to I3. So therefore, I3 minus I2 equal to 0. So if we can rearrange, then we'll be getting minus R3 into I2 plus, uh, I'm writing in, a, uh, in an order. Okay, so R3 plus R4 into I3 equal to 0. You'll be getting two equations. Actually, how many unknowns are there? I, I mean to say, how many loop currents are there that we are going to find? Three. So, now we have got only two equations. So, it is difficult to find three unknowns from two equations. Now, we need to concentrate. I will erase all these points, okay, so that it will be easy for us, okay. Right. So, here... One more resistance is there. Uh, this is R2. Right. Now, this current is I. Okay. Um, what we have assumed. Uh, this is our current I1. This is our current I2. Clear? Right. Now, how this I1 is acting? I1 is flowing from top to bottom. I2 is flowing from bottom to top at this particular moment. Okay, so I is a current source, right? So wh what current is aiding? I2 is aiding. I1 is in opposite direction for your current source. So by simple observation, what we can write? Minus I1 plus I2 will give you the current source value I. Clear? So, it will be called as a third equation. So, after getting all these three equations, solve all the three equations. That is equation 1, 2 and 3. There we can able to get the loop currents I1, I2, I3. Okay? So, once we got the loop currents, we can find the current through any element in the given network. Once we got the current and we already aware of the resistance in this case, we can find voltage drops. Once we got the current data and voltage data, then we can automatically find power dissipations also.
So this is about a super mesh analysis concept. So firstly, we need to identify whether the given network is planar or non-planar. And the second step that you have followed for mesh analysis, identify number of meshes. And third step, assume the current directions if it is not specified. And fourth step, you need to apply KVL for each and every mesh. So while we are applying mesh analysis, if we can get a common current source between two meshes, then it is difficult to calculate the voltage drop across that particular current source on that node. So whatever the meshes that are sharing that current, common current, then those two meshes can be treated as a single mesh and we have to write a single equation. And later, whatever the skipped value of uh, skipped element that is there, no, so current source. So that will be uh, written in an equation form, okay, with our loop currents. So there you can uh, get the required number of equations and solve those equations, you'll be getting the loop currents. Okay, so let us discuss um, super mesh analysis with a numerical uh, example. So now let us consider a numerical problem. So firstly, we need to check whether the given network is planar or non-planar. So, because there are uh, no crossovers, we can um, say that the given network is a planar. So, first step is over. Now, the second step, identify the number of meshes. So, here is the first mesh, second mesh and then third mesh. Okay. Now, so since the directions of uh, the meshes are not given, we need to assume our own directions. So, here I am assuming the mesh 1 current direction like this. Okay, so this is I1 and let us assume the mesh 2 current as I2 like this and uh, mesh 3 current like this. Okay, right. So second step is over and now current directions were assumed and now we need to apply KVL for each and every mesh. So now let us apply KVL for the first mesh. Apply KVL. Now voltage across 10 ohm resistor, just follow the I1 direction. So whatever the element that is uh, come, uh, then you can write the voltage drop. So voltage across 10 ohm resistor plus voltage across 5 ohm resistor plus of minus 50 equal to 0. Now, because the 10 ohm is common for both the first mesh and second mesh and you are writing for mesh 1, so I1 is your reference. So see here, I1 is flowing in this direction at this moment. I2 is in the reverse direction. So I2 will be considered as a minus current. So minus I2. So, V equal to IR is the formula. So, I1 minus I2 is the current flowing through 10 ohm resistance from top to bottom. Okay. Now, and uh, 10 ohm is itself is a resistance. So, the product will be considered as a voltage drop. So, similarly, voltage across 5 ohm. So, 5, keep I1 straight away. And I1 is flowing from top to bottom. I3, uh, I3 from bottom to top. So, that's why. I3 will also be considered as minus I3. Okay, so keep this uh, minus 50 to the other side, then it will be 50. So the equation will be 15 I1 minus 10 I2 minus 5 I3 equal to 50. Okay, so this will be considered as equation 1. Now we write mesh 2 equation firstly. Okay. But you just observe mesh 2. Mesh 2 is having a current source, which is common for mesh 2 and mesh 3 also. So that's why you have to write mesh 2 and 3 equations at a time as a single equation. So again, we need to follow some common current direction. So here I am following. So look at the yellow lines. I am following this path. Okay, so mostly consider the first current direction. Then it will be easy for us to write the 
equations. Okay, so follow the yellow line. Okay, now and concentrate on uh, loop 2. Okay, so first loop 2, no element here. So first element that is coming there, uh, second loop is 2 ohm. So this is voltage across 2 ohm resistor, follow the yellow line. Then uh, 1 ohm will be there. So in 1 ohm, I3 is flowing. Okay, so we'll uh, consider that point a bit later. Then voltage across 1 ohm resistor, follow the yellow line. Next element will be 5 ohm. So voltage across 5 ohm resistor. Next element will be voltage across 10. So that is 10 ohm resistor. Should be equal to 0. Now whatever the loop current may be, so apply the same loop current in order to find the voltage drop across that particular resistor. So since uh, 2 ohm is having I2, okay, so amount of current, so this will be 2 I2. Now voltage across 1 ohm, so 1 into I3 will be I3 plus voltage across 5. So this is common for mesh 3 and mesh 1. So you are writing for 2 and 3, mesh 2 and 3. So I3 here for this particular case will be your reference direction. Okay. Um, right. I3. Now, how I1 is acting towards I3? That is in opposite direction for I3. So, this will be I1 will be considered as minus I1 because this is in opposite direction for I3. Okay. So, this is voltage drop across 5 ohm. Next, write 10 ohms first. Now, first write I2 because you are writing for mesh 2 and 3. So, now 2 is your reference direction for this second loop. So, I1 is acting opposite to I2. So, consider minus I1. Simple. Okay. Equal to 0. Now, minus 5, minus 15 I1. So, this is 2 ohm and one more 10 is there. So, it will be 12 I2. So, plus uh, I think 6 I3. Okay equal to 0. Let me check. So, minus 5, minus 10, okay, uh, minus 15. So, I2 coefficient 2 and here 10, so 12. So, I3, 5, 1, 6. All right. So, this is our second equation. Okay. Now, so we got two equations and three unknowns are there. So, here the three unknowns are I1, I2, I3. So, therefore, we need one more equation. So, where we can get that extra one equation? So, now you concentrate on this part. Okay. So, concentrate on this part. So, that is the 2 ampere current source. I will redraw here so that it will be clear for you. Okay. So, here is our 2 ampere current source. According to our assumed directions. So, this is I2 at this moment. Okay, and uh, this is I3 direction. Okay, this is I3. Look at here. So, I2 from left to right. I3 from, sorry, I2 from right to left. I3 from left to right, like this. Okay, so what should be the 2 ampere value? So, according to the loop directions so according to the loop directions we can write so plus i2 okay minus i3 equal to 2 clear so because this i2 is in the same direction of current source i3 is in opposite direction for 2 ampere current source so that's why we can write like this so call it as equation 3 so we got three equations and three unknowns are there, we can solve. So, now you solve equations 1, 2 and 3. That's it. You'll be getting the values for I1, I2, I3. Okay. So, in this way, we can find the loop currents. So, once we got the loop currents, we can find the voltage drops or we can find the power dissipations also. Okay, so I hope uh, this super mesh analysis uh, technique is clear for everyone. So if you are having any doubts, please comment. Uh, I would like to answer. Thank you so much.